Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. before you today, thanking you for being the great God you are. God, you are perfect in every way. You are our healer, provider, and our savior. God, we bless your holy name. Lord, we know that we do not always do what is right in your eyes, and we ask for forgiveness for this. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us for the things we have done, and also forgive us for failing to do what we know we should have done. Lord, so often the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. We ask that you would strengthen our spirit, Lord, and help us to come closer to you and to live the way that you would want us to live. Forgive us, O oh Lord, and help us to be better people. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us time and time again. Thank you, Lord, for this day and all that are present here today. Thank you, Lord, that we can still worship together despite all that is going on in the world. Lord, we thank you for our church and its leaders. We thank you for our beautiful country, Barbados, and all those in authority over our country. 
Thank you, Lord, for all those essential workers who have been working tirelessly throughout this pandemic. May you continue to bless and strengthen them as they continue to work to the best of their abilities. Thank you, Lord, for all others who have returned to work. May you bless them in their day-to-day -day lives and keep them safe. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for each and every person on this planet. Thank you, Lord. Father, we now live our country before you. There has been lots of pain and suffering in our land, Lord. We bring the people of Barbados before you. We ask that you touch us in a special way, that you will touch our hearts and make them new. Give us loving hearts and forgiving spirits. Help us to love each other, care for each other, and look out for each other. Forgive us for the things we have done, Lord, and make us new. Lord, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We ask that you wrap your arms around all those suffering during this time. Comfort them and give them peace. Place your people in their lives and so that they would feel your love and your comfort. Lord, we also pray for those working to find a vaccine for the coronavirus. Lord, direct them, help them to make the right decisions in every aspect of their studies so that people would no longer have to experience pain and suffering. Lord, we thank you for our church. Bless the preachers, Sunday school teachers, choirs, dance ministries, and all other ministries which serve you. May everything that these ministries produce honor and glorify your name and win souls for you. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done, for everything you are doing, and everything that you will do in the future. We love you, Lord, and may your will be done. Amen.
Good night, brothers and sisters. Our text for tonight is from 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1 to 9. It reads, And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh, and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. I want to reflect briefly on our text for tonight, Growth with God. Paul's intention of this letter and one of his main reasons for writing this letter is to address the continued spiritual immaturity of the Corinthian church, which is displayed through its intense, very intense factionalism. The Corinthian church appears to be divided into factions supporting or allied with Paul or Apollos or any other person. There was jealousy and quarreling among the people. They were not deeply rooted in God's word and they were not showing that they had been born again in Christ. Paul said that he planted a seed in Corinth and Apollos watered it. Paul explains that he and Apollos were merely servants of God who were assigned a task. He told the people not to look up to them. Instead, they should look up to Christ. Paul and Apollos were simply co-workers and each had his own job. They both worked on the field that God had laid out for them, doing what they were told to do for the glory of God. This is the essence of what Paul had said to people he expected to be more mature in their faith. He expected the Corinthian church to be more mature than this behavior would seem to dictate. Paul has two simple words for these immature Christians. Grow up. Christians are meant to be mature and to be more and more like Christ. But Paul was not seeing that in Corinth. Paul wondered if the church in Corinth would ever grow up. In verse 1 of our text, he pictures them as infants in Christ who are not even ready for solid food. In verse 2, he refers to them as sucking milk rather than chewing food, chewing meat. They should no longer be in this early stage of spiritual development like when they first heard about Christ. But according to Paul, their immaturity has continued. Their growth has stopped. Even now, says Paul, you are still not ready. Spiritual maturity may be measured in many ways. To some, it means a deep knowledge of the Bible. To others, it, Christian maturity is a strong prayer life. And for some, it is generous giving and generous acts of service. Those are good marks of a person growing up in Christ. But for Paul, it is how you get along with other Christians in the body of Christ. Paul starts out by contrasting being spiritual with being people of the flesh. And for Paul, the flesh is his way of identifying everything a person born again into new life in Christ desires to leave behind. So when Paul said that the Corinthians were of the flesh, he was not so much concerned with sins like overeating or drunkenness or sexual immorality, He's saying that life filled with the Holy Spirit of God given to us in Jesus Christ ought to look different from life lived without the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
People who are spiritually immature behave like everyone else. The primary sign of that spiritual immaturity is what we find in verse 3. Jealousy and quarreling among you. Some are saying, I follow Paul. And some are saying, I follow Apollos. Their church is divided up around these figureheads and it is failing to cooperate and work together in love. But Paul started out his letter by telling them the fundamental problem was not these issues, like the theological issues and the issues about spiritual gifts. It's not these issues. It is the way they related to each other around these issues. He was saying that the whole church needed to grow up because of the quarrels among them. Growth is an essential part of life and it is indeed an indicator of life. Life is about growth and growth is about stepping up to the next level. Christian life, spiritual life, is the experience of our Lord always raising the level on us for us, expecting more from us than we even expect of ourselves. That is why Paul was so upset with the Corinthians. They are living up to human expectations rather than spiritual expectations. They needed to grow up. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? He asks in verse 5. Paul uses the names of the two persons which were dividing them to demonstrate how they needed to grow up. Those two Christian leaders weren't rivals. They were partners with each other and God in a work that God wants to be done together. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. What you or I or any servant of the Lord does is much less significant than what the Lord does because it is the Lord God who gives the growth. Everything good that Paul and Apollos did, they did as co-workers with God. And God was at work to make it fruitful. It is the same, brothers and sisters, for you and I. God knows that he could accomplish what he is doing in this world and in people's lives without our immature and unskilled interventions. What Paul says is true. Our parts don't amount to much of anything. It is only what God does that is ultimately significant. Yet, God in his infinite wisdom and mercy continues to use human co-workers. He does it because he wants us to learn and grow spiritually and have victory in our lives in and through the process of working with him. What God wants us to learn in working with him is how to work with each other in the way that he works with us. He works with us with tremendous grace and love and patience. In verse 9, Paul says, For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. We are God's servants. Not Paul's or Apollos or the reverends or the bishops. We are God's servants. Even though we are his servants, he gives us grace to work alongside him and alongside each other to bring growth and maturity on our faith journey. We are his field. He is actively using us and planting his word in us so that he can use us to bring about growth. We are God's building. And this is two meanings. We are God's building, God apostrophe S, the building belonging to God. And this building has an architect, the architect, which is God, who is infinite in wisdom and power. And this building has a good foundation and should have a good foundation. And Christ is the best foundation. Christ is made the sure foundation because nothing will ever shake or destroy this foundation. It is the rock on which we stand. Or we can interpret it as God is building. Our work is to become his servants, live in harmony with him and others and allow his word to be planted in our hearts and become his dwelling place because it is God and God alone who brings the increase. God is building. 
God is working on our behalf to bring about growth. He does not need our interventions, but he allows us to be his co-workers so that we may see him in all his glory and shed his glory and his love and his mercy and his kindness to others as he has so freely given us. Let us work together to bring about change in our society, to bring relief to those who are suffering, to help those who cannot help themselves, and above all, to show love to the poor in heart and in spirit. For we know that what we do together, and in his name, God will bring the increase. Let us grow with God and glorify him in all our doings. I give thanks for God's word, the growth he affords us, and for all of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is so much to learn from the corrective instructions in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And may we all learn the value of living in unity of spirit for the glory of God and the praise of our Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, help us to abide in you and grow in grace so that day by day we may be conformed into your image so that we may become more and more like you with every passing day. And now, brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with you, and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.